Did you ever want to make video games? When I was young, I sure did. So as I got older, I realized how important it was to find the use of something like a video game. In my science class recently, I taught students how to make this basic simulation using NetLogo, where these little brown dots, which are maybe a little hard to see, are interacting with these coral that are on the screen. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make that exact simulation. Uh, the link for this file will be down below. I'll try to keep the typing uh, fast forwarded on the video so you're not sitting there watching typing the entire time. Uh, basically, if you go through this, uh, the main thing is with each new step, this part here where it says arrows show what the new step is, this is going to indicate what you need to add to try to simplify the process of using NetLogo to make a simple two variable simulation. After you've done that, I'm gonna challenge you to actually um, make your own or to improve on the one that you've designed. Um, I'll put a link for this too. Um, this experiment was based on an eggshell experiment that the students did in class, where they did the simple two variable process of using um, acid vinegar solutions uh, that they designed in order to see the mass change of eggs. After doing that experiment, they went through this simulation. Uh, first thing I wanna do is um, I'm gonna read through what it says on the left side of the screen. And then the supporting picture is really there to help you understand what the process means. So if you've never used this before, um, I'm trying to show you this process. NetLogo does have some cool tutorials on their website, but they're pretty, uh, pretty complex and um, they're not necessarily meant for um, a high school classroom as far as I understood it. So I wanted to connect something that was really meaningful to my students. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I want to get this thing uh, working. So I'm going to add a button. So on this drop down menu, I have button selected. If add is highlighted, you get the crosshairs uh, and you can just click once and you've got this button added. I can type the word setup and that both displays in the button and it's uh, put here. Um, I'm gonna hit okay and go on to the next step. Um, you can basically see the setup button is in red, which means nothing has been set up if you try to click it. So now if you look up here, I've highlighted the code tab and in the code tab, it says I need to type the following code that is listed in this space. Now you've basically made your first code. So if you click check um, and everything looks good, it should be ready for you. If you go back to the interface and you click setup, you see that your black screen turns to blue. And if you go back in the code, you can actually see that um, this part here where it says set P color blue is making the background blue. So if you want to describe that, you can hit semicolon two times and then you can put on here what it does so that in common words, it actually shows you what you're doing. Okay, moving on. Um, you don't wanna lose this. So assuming students might not actually finish this in one class period or within their own time frame, I would right now click file and save and um, find a spot where you can save this. Um, desktop is usually a good spot. And um, this is ocean acidification model. So I'm going to go back to my interface tab that it shows there, and I want to add another button. So I'm on button, I can click add, and I've got this button, and I want to type add acids into the command, add dash acids. We'll talk about that dash in a second. If I scroll down, um, it's going to tell me now what I need to do in my code tab. So I go back to the code tab, and notice... Again, the arrows show me what I want to add to my entire code. It's not quite like coding, but it uh, works for this program, and it might be a good intro for a lot of students. So above my setup, I'm going to have to hit enter a couple of times. I want to type the word breed, and bracket acids are a shape called a dot, which we'll talk about in a little bit too. Um, and then in my setup, I need to identify under where it says set up patches. I want to add that line that says set dash default. And at the end, I'm going to tell that button what to do. So notice the button was called add acids. So I'm going to type add dash acids, just like the button says. So the program knows what to do. So you start to notice the connections here 
uh, of these words directly connect to things that you've put into your program. Okay, a couple of quick things I do want to mention. Um, spelling is extremely important. So if you spell anything wrong, like let's say I spelled the word end wrong, um, and I hit check, it says this procedure does not end with an end process. So I have to go back and I see here, uh, if I didn't spell something wrong, it's going to miss it. Um, because you're copying this code, you will hopefully get everything correct. But when you're making up your own code or you're using your own words, uh, you'll notice that they need to be spelled and spacing is extremely important too. Okay, um, as we go through here, you're gonna see we added these dots and this little code here is telling the button what to do. So now I can check and everything works. And if I go back to my interface, I can see now I click set up. And when I add acids, they're a little hard to see, uh, but you can see those brown dots forming all over the screen. Um, just assuming that we're putting some acid into our um, ocean environment. Again, simple, maybe not totally scientific at this point, but it's gonna get the point across. Um, next thing I wanna do is actually measure how acidic is my environment. So I'm gonna go back to my interface and I'm gonna add a monitor. So I click here and I go down to monitor and the ad is highlighted and I can just click and there's a monitor. Um, if you see here, the monitor says 8.2 because that is approximately the acidity of the ocean. Okay, next thing we want to do is add a go button. So we want these acids to actually move around a little bit like they would in an aqueous environment. So we're going to go back and add a button. And that button is simply going to say go. Uh, one big thing that a lot of students miss, you notice on the screen, there's this little kind of infinity symbol. They need to click the option for forever. That way, um, the button keeps functioning instead of clicking it like once every time, it just keeps continuing over and over again. Same thing, after you have it, it turns red because the button does not know what to do unless you tell the button what to do. So in our code, we're going to go back and uh, you can put this in a lot of different places. So if we go back to the interface, now hit setup. Um, add our acids and hit go, the acids can move quite a bit on the screen. Add a slider. Okay, um, if I want this to look a lot like this, notice at any time I can right click and select a button and I can move it a little bit uh, so I can put my slider in place. Okay, so I go back and I'm gonna find a slider in the drop down menu. I can click in my section here. And then this was too hard to copy. So if you look over here, it says exactly uh, what this needs to say. So um, again, um, this won't exactly know what to do because I need to say to the code what exactly are corals. So again, arrows show, show you what's new. So I'm going to add Uh, you'll notice twice I typed in this random X core, Y core. Um, if you get more advanced than this, you can actually tell things where to belong, but the background is kind of like a grid system. So when it says set X, Y, it's assuming that it's an X, Y uh, coordinate plane. And then um, a random X coordinate, random Y coordinate is just going to put the object in any position randomly on the screen. So you can use that for lots of different um, functions in this to make it more realistic. Um, but you can see it's set up because it's like a grid. Okay, if I check this, uh, okay, notice again, I made a mistake. I did not put a closing bracket. So it's really good that it keeps me in check there. And if I go back to my interface and hit set up, you now notice um, there's these corals here. And again, randomness means if I click set up, they're gonna be randomly placed on my screen. I add acids and acids will move, corals are there, but nothing's happening. So here's the idea of the video game kind of concept. I actually wanna tell these things what to do and I wanna kind of see how many there are. In this space, you'll notice next, I want to add a plot. 
to track uh, my different populations of things or my numbers of things, which can be pretty important in Um, now, if I did setup and added acids, you can see on here, it's got numbers. Uh, there's 55 acids on the screen and there are five corals on the screen, but nothing's changing because they need to talk to each other. And that's this last part. We're going to create interaction like in any real life, any video game. Uh, we actually want these things to interact with each other. So first we go back to our code and we're going to give everything energy. So all the, the acids and corals are what we would call turtles in many different programs. And we're going to give them energy. Okay, so this last step, um, basically tells everything how to interact. So it says, okay, this command of killing corals, which I put in my go, uh, go tab, um, has to be explained somewhere. So when these interact, it pretty much says, ask the acids. If they run into a coral, uh, you're gonna subtract one from their energy. Assuming that uh, the acids, if they interact with a certain object, will um, neutralize and turn into something different, right? And we're going to ask the corals the same question. If they run into an acid, uh, we're also going to subtract from their energy. Um, and then we're going to ask each of them if they have an energy value equal to zero that tells them to die, which NetLogo assumes that they can just disappear from the screen. Um, the basic way I learned all these uh, interactions was by looking at other simulators in order to figure out how do things interact in these uh, NetLogo simulators and I was able to apply that into my own simulator. So if I go back now to my interface, um, if I hit, um, let's change my corals. Let's say I start with uh, 10. I hit setup. I want to add acids onto my screen. Notice that lowers my pH. And I can see um, if I hit go, my acid value is this top line. And it's slowly disappearing. And then the same with my corals, they're both disappearing from the screen and my population of corals is disappearing on this uh, plot chart. And that last coral is going to eventually disappear as these acids run into it. So um, this was a hopefully quick attempt to get teachers and students really working with something called NetLogo. Uh, but more importantly, making computer simulators because a lot of what we do in science classrooms is now being used in computer simulations and a lot of times uh, being able to model something is pretty important. Um, there's tons of possibilities out there for two variable simulators. Uh, if you finish, if you're a student and you finish early or you actually want to make this a bit more realistic, um, I've got a few ideas here down in this link uh, that can help you um, extend this a little bit. For example, um, those acids are really hard to see, right? So I might go back and say, well, I don't want them to be brown. I want them to be a different color. And if you go up into this tools tab, you can see there's a uh, lot of different options here as far as like editing and uh, different things that are happening in here. So if you just simply look at the colors, you can see there's a whole range of colors. There's a lot of basic colors, which you can use their real names, or you can even put in a number value. So let's say I want the acids to be a bit brighter so they're easier to see. I'm going to choose uh, number 45, which is also uh, yellow. And I can simply change the um, acid color from brown and I could put in the number 45. And if I go back to my interface, I hit setup, I add acids. We can now see that they're much easier to see on the screen and um, they're much more um, optional to kind of follow. Um, NetLogo has tons of other tutorials for this. Um, I don't want to take up too much time. I just want people to get started on something. And um, I would challenge you to actually research a little bit more about corals. Uh, you'll notice they're not white unless they're dead. Uh, acids don't kill them directly. There's tons of things that I know are not totally accurate about the simulator, but that's the challenge for students to come up with is um, asking the question, how accurate are these models?
and also how can we improve them to make them more accurate based on valid research. A um, couple of key terms, if you just want to pause and read through these, you can see what some of these things are called that we used. Otherwise, I hope you learned something new today. Challenge you to go try it out yourself.